I'm going to do this a little bit different. I didn't show it too clear, but I'm going to spread the tail feathers out. I'm going to use weights or whatever I got to. Then I'm going to use tape, tape where they'll hold. Then I'll throw some cardboard on there. Then when I throw the cardboard on there, uh, the feathers won't move. And then I'll do the bondo process on the quills. Here, I just got a few little items here and there. I'm going to use the, you, you know, you want a full spread, but you don't want, yeah, you want to make sure that you've got your gaps covered. So there's a little bit of a balancing act there. That, which you got to do a little bit of adjustment sometimes of what I'm getting at. Do that. I can go back like this. Yeah, you want the, you know, it's always good to have a full fan if you can. Sometimes you can't do the, you know, tail damage. Sometimes they'll bring a bird that has a lot of damage and you can't cover everything. That looks pretty good. Let's see, that can go up. There looks pretty good. Sometimes in the middle is what I'm getting at. They tend to uh, start separating. The feathers do. And uh, if you can keep from doing that and still get a good full spread, that's a good way to go. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Some separation here, let's see. Pretty good to me. Now I'm just gonna roll some tape on there. Usually holds pretty good. Make sure it touches those quills. That's when it's on the quills, that kind of really helps it to. And hold everything together. All that looks pretty darn good. I'm happy with it. Right there. side that. Got a little bit out of balance here by accident Cool, that'll hold everything. Make sure I've got some good straight cardboard. And I've done this on other videos. But yeah, just put staples across the end. And then get up under the tail. Put the tail on this side. Okay. Give it a good long staple gun. Basically, what you're doing, you getting on the end on one side. Go over the quill as far in as you can. Make sure they go through the other side. And 
sure it's good and spread out real good and then go to your go to another one and the, t the tape helps reinforce you know the feathers so they don't move so much and you just find for this back one here first Staple in this next one. Probably don't have to do every one of them, but make sure they're good and flat. And go down to this one. There we are. So we've got a pretty good spread right there. Well, it is good. I mean, these, these last tail feathers are basically straight across, which is what you want. Yeah, just put one underneath. Spread it out real good where you can see. I like to even see the cardboard. So you can see the cardboard under the bottom one there. There's the top one. Try to match it up with what's underneath. Through, flatten it out. Going through, flatten it out. Here we go. On this side, we got this right here. There we are. Good thing those staples and stuff come out. I'm going to go ahead and cut the tail off. And I'm going to leave all these on. I'll get just right between between these last feathers and these quills I'm going to go ahead and just cut on through Way down to that bottom feather. All that's coming up there. All the way up to that bottom feather. Well, that's on this side. Same thing on this side. Okay, right here. Guess what that little, uh, uh, I don't know, birds preen themselves and get oil off this thing right here. Yeah, I'll go about right here. I left it on there. And I'm going. Okay, let's see what we got here. All these bottom tail feathers are still on. Now, if I want, I can go ahead and bond all these tail quills. But I've got to put a wire in there that's going to go inside the bird body. Okay, I'm going to get all this excess skin, uh, even this little, uh, what they preen their feathers with and get oil off of, all this is coming off too. Let's see what we got here. All 
all this excess right here. All this excess. All this excess right here. There we are. I'm exposing all the quills. Balance all these fitted up. Now you've got places where shots went through. You can't do nothing about that. But we can definitely spread these feathers up top, make them look nice and uniform. Probably clean all the powder off with a toothbrush. Kind of clean it up real good. You know? get up under those quills where they come together. Preen the feathers about as good as I can get them. Uh, then you just run, uh, kind of like rake up the sides of it does pretty good. Of course, there's some shot damage. You can't do anything about that, but like right there, a bad one. There's a piece right there. But you can bring all that stuff together on the ends and it kind of makes everything look a little better. Got a little bond on a piece of cardboard. And I'm gonna get a little, some of my hardener. Mix it up real good. Spread it real good on there. If you move your feathers or anything, you still got time to, you know, get it right if you have to. Make sure everything's spread like you want it. And it shouldn't be long. Shouldn't have to wait long. Now you want it to dry real good before you try to you know, turn it upside down. While it's drying, I kind of, we're going to hook this tail. We're going to bundle the back of the tail, and then we're going to hook it in. So I'm just kind of getting a rough idea of what I need, about like this. Yeah, we may even cut more off. You know, something like this. This is going in on the other side. I'm just kind of getting ready. And it's probably going to bend about about right in here, but I'm going to wait till we get to the other side. 
what it's gonna do is it's gonna bend out and go straight up like this. And what it's gonna do is that way we can use this and mash into the uh, uh oh. We want a little bit of a bowl to it, so yeah. It's good I got it before it got dry. Like this. Just uh Yeah, about like this. Now you hold it like this, it gets hard. Or you can hold it like this even. Something like this. Okay, we're gonna bend about right here. Just kinda Trying to bend them down good and even. Looks good to me. There we are. The way I was taught was to just leave it, leave the tail on the body, and then bend it, and then you know find a way to secure the tail later. You know, shooting screws through and stuff. It's the way I was taught. But this is the way a lot of people do it. So it must be the right way. Mess with it too much, I get right on it. Gotta get right on it. Yeah, put, put a layer down on it first. Got a little bit of a bow in it, even. I want a little bit of a bow, don't want it straight. This is good enough for me right here. I'll go for a bow. Make sure all your feathers are where you want it, and I'm gonna let them dry real good. This is what we got right here. I'm just gonna lay it down somewhere. It's got a little bit of a bow in it, which is what I want, and uh, I'm just gonna let it dry real good. I gotta. Do a lot more work on the bird anyway. I've already done all this before on, on a flying video, uh, on my turkey flying video, and I've got a strutting video that's a little bit haphazard. I'm going to try to clarify a few things. Um, okay, I went ahead and sewed him up the middle. You know how we sew them right up the middle? Try to kind of like follow the, there's like a gap between the feather patterns, and uh, usually that's how I like to do it. But right down the right down the breast there's a breastbone I'll, I'll usually go to one side or the other and actually let the bre breastbone guide my knife because it's uh it's a thin it's thin the breastbone is and you can go to one side or the other and it's just it's such a minute a little bit of displacement that it don't matter you know as long as you can use it as a guide is what I'm getting at for your knife and that's what I do on all my birds And you know how I do the, you know how I do my turkeys with the, the polyfill um, stuff that goes around the bottom of Christmas trees, that flat stuff. I glue it on my body in the breast area and along the back where the back feathers are going to be raising up. That way when I rake them forwards, they'll grab that little bit of polyfill. Uh, although it's thin, you know, like in sheets, like that goes around the bottom of Christmas trees and stuff, it's still good enough for... That's what I like to use. I like to just glue it on the body with uh, some kind of adhesive. In this case, contact cement's all I had, but it worked, so I used it. And some other things I want to clarify. I've already done these, but you can see how the feathers are a little bit, uh, you know, some, some of it, you know, where he's been strutting. You can tell the ends of his feathers are, are, are cut off or broke off. You can't do anything about that, but a lot of these gaps, that make a, you know, make a mount look kind of rough. Uh, you can smooth them out. Sometimes you can't do anything about it, but sometimes you can. See, I'm, I'm 
putting them back together, you can uh, really smooth this stuff out where in the long, you know, if you do the whole bird this way, you know, take advantage of every, every feather that's out of place and get rid of every gap that you possibly can, you'd be surprised how big of a difference it can make. It's kind of like, uh, well, like sweeping a floor or something in a room. If you sleep, if you just sweep one spot, you know, oh well. But if you uh, do the whole thing, you begin to notice a, a difference. And you see all these little gaps, you can kind of get them together. And it does help. I think I've already clarified that before on another one. But you've, you've, got, you've got to contend with other stuff that's beyond your control, such as bullet, you know, uh, damage from the shot. You know, you've got to worry about stuff like shot damage and what have you. Some stuff you... But these ends, you know, sometimes they're just boogered up a little from the mounting process. Sometimes you can help them out a little, is what I'm getting at. And you can pretty much do it any time during the mount, mounting process up here. You just make those gaps disappear if they will. Just make, I went like this. You know, after I mount it, I made sure all of the, the wings and the legs are tight and close to the body. You know, I'll pull and pull, make sure everything is tight to the body. And I've already showed you how I do my wings. You know, it's, it's, on, it's on YouTube. And so I went up with my legs. And I like, it's good to put a bend in it to give the illusion of walking. Maybe one leg more forwards. And a lot of this can be done after you get him on the earth base, which is what we're going to put him on as an earth base. And it's the same thing as any other base. It's just got a wood bottom. And you drill holes to the bottom. And then when they go through, when these wires go through, then you bend them up, hammer them up, and then you uh, staple them in place, you know, or fasten or secure something to where this is st stuck fast to the bottom where you can do your mounting and stuff. So that's kind of what we got going on. So now I'm going to try to adjust to get him on the base. I don't know exactly how much of this wire I need, this leg wire I need. I know uh, they're not super long to begin with. So I'm going to wait before I take the ends off. Yeah, I'm kind of happy with the separation this way. And uh, so I'm just going to kind of... Get it like how I think it should be straight. Yeah, they ain't got to be perfect, you know, we are... Uh, Kind of add living as we go here. I'm trying to get an idea where I'm going to put him. I like the idea about right. Yeah, about right there. See, all this is is foam with dirt glued on it, see. Yeah, you can actually make these bases yourself. It's just foam with uh, contact adhesive sprayed on it and then just pot and soil put on it and a little bit of a wood base. So that's basically what you got going on. So that was easy enough. I mean, now I know where my holes are. I just get a drill, a good long drill bit, and uh, drilled all the way down through the wood, all the way through the bottom.
We have a couple of nice holes. Grab a bird. Go through those nice holes we just made. And it's all the way through. Make sure those toes are flat. Wow. Look at that. What a good mount. What I gotta do, I gotta lift it up. Make sure those are mashed in real good. You can pull on them a little bit. And then I'll bend them. Do the same thing on this side. I like them to be a little bit pigeon-toed. It just seems to, to fit, if you know what I mean. I kind of like the way he is right now. Basically, I just beat him in place. No killing what he looks like in the game, though. Yes. They got stuff you can buy at Lowe's that Basically, you just hammer the thing on and it's kind of like it secures everything. So. So that's pretty good on that side. So, let me take this side off. radiator hose clamp. I cut in half. That's all it is. We need to do the same thing to this side. We have to cut a little bit of that off where it's kind of overreaching towards the side there. It's all right. We need to hammer real good make sure it's And you know the mirror hanger brackets are perfect. You know the where it loops around the squiggle. Those mirror hanger brackets, I use those a lot. You got an extra one of those, one or two of those. And uh, and you can use staples too, of course. And he won't move or do nothing. So that's how you anchor them real good. And he gets them pretty darn good and stiff. Plus, when the toes dry, the legs dry, the whole birdie bird dries, and all the moisture is out of him, it's going to eliminate a lot of rocking. If you know what I mean. Those things that people hammer barbed wire fences with. Those giant staples, those are perfect for stuff like this too. I've used those before. Oh, power surge. 
as fast as you can to kind of help help it out, you know. I showed you on the other video. What you're doing is going like this, and these big primary feathers, which are kind of like fingers, they are kind of going back. So you've got, we'll cut this excess wire off here later. Okay. So it's kind of like your wrist right here. It's like the wrist. Shot damage, look at that. Sometimes they just get boogered up. You might get people to throw stuff in your freezer when you're not around. I've run into that before. And, uh, yeah, that not they're not caring about other people's stuff.
I don't want to use reference pictures. Uh, I may do that myself, actually. Get some reference pictures. These should fluff up and go over the front of these to the point where you'll never even see them, if that makes any sense. No way to wrong these up. These breast feathers, they'll uh, take over these. And I'm going to get a reference picture here in a minute. I'm just kind of breaking it in, kind of like how I want it right now. So that makes any sense. That's so that it is. Okay. There we are. Mash those elbows into the body. It doesn't hurt to have elbows into the body very good. Some people will even put big pins on them. Make sure the elbows stay in close to the body that way. With the idea, and you do the other wing the same way, you're just kind of getting him ready for proportioning in there. Some people like these to stick out. I have his feathers almost touching the ground, it's good. I don't mind doing that at all. And I'm going to do the other side the same way, kind of proportion him a little bit. Might as well let you watch. Okay, this side's doing pretty good already. Where the joint is, right there, the wing joint. Hold right there. Okay. So Compares to the other side. It's going to line up pretty good because it's uh, on the same bird. So it should line up pretty good anyway, regardless. Well, it would be better, that's for sure. There we go. Yeah, of course, he lined up good. He's all the same bird. All the, you know, where we connect him to the body was all the same, so he has no choice but to come out. You know what I mean? As you can tell, he just naturally kind of aligned up anyway, really. And it's because it's all the same bird. Contact points are symmetrical. Wings are the same length. The bones, each bone individual, you know, where they meet at the joints, everything is symmetrical already. All I did was put in a foam body. So everything's lining up naturally anyway. So that's kind of what we got going on there. Kind of breaking the feathers in a little bit. What I'll do is I'll stand in front and rake them forward to these top ones. And we'll be working the breast feathers out too. We'll do that later. That's kind of what we got going on there. And eventually these will stand straight up, these back tail feathers, or these back top feathers. We're fixing to put the tail on. You see how that's already starting to come up. What it is, those quills grab that little bit of that polyfill sheeting I put on there. I don't know the exact word what you call it. The stuff that goes around the bottom of Christmas trees. It's it's that stuff. I don't know, polyfill sheeting? Is that, is that the right word? It's like polyfill but in sheets, and I just kind of glued it on the body. It's either that or use caulking, and I'm not too familiar with caulking. 
but it would be a faster set. So I can definitely give me a lure of that. Got plenty of room for my tail. But I think that may be our next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and put the, put the tail on and start proportioning everything. And I'll show you a little bit about the wings, something that I showed it, but it wasn't too clear. Um, I don't like the wings. I like to put a wire up under these wings to bowl them out just a little bit so they're not up against the body. So they'll be about like this. And then I worry about my separation. All that what it is is I stick a wire in there, and then I bowl it around, and then I contact it. And this foam base, I'm going to be problem. I'll just jab it down in there. It'll be a small hole in the way I'll notice. But you kind of get what I'm talking about uh, from the side. I'll show you from the side. Yeah, these wings are kind of flat up against the body. But I'll go right up under, right up under these wings where they, or where they're on top of the, top of the bird here. And I'll go in about right here. But I may want to put the tail fan on first because I know how far I can go back with these, the secondary feathers. And I'll have them open up in a, in a good way. You know, you don't want them too spread open. They got a nice way of doing it. Uh, about, about like that. See, these, this all can be creamed. See how they're separated? All this makes a difference. I don't do it too much in the video. But see how I just brought that together? That was separated. There's a big gap in there. And, uh, yeah, you can bring all this stuff together and uh, get rid of those big gaps. It's just like when you're washing them, you've got to go through a little bit of manicure and get some of this stuff back together. Yeah, see? You'd be surprised what you can do with your fingers. Brought that together. Those two cone feathers, real pretty. Camouflage. See? See that gap right there? Watch this. So I brought that together. No more gap. Or a small one, but still. I'll put it in the See that? On the ends, even you can do it. See, I brought the ends together. You can bring the ends together just by using your fingers. Just by using your fingers. Makes for a neat mount. You can do that with these side ones. I think I showed that in earlier video. But I think I'm going to put the tail on. But I just wanted to show you. These are going to kind of clump up. These are going to spread out. Uh, but look cool. There's a cool way to do it. You know, you just got to make sure you're doing it right. And uh, but I'll show you all that here in a little bit. Well, before I reattach the tail, it's had plenty of time to dry. Uh, probably about two or three weeks, so it's, it's fine. Um, plenty of time to dry, plus I use Bondo. But I'm going to show you what we're doing here. We turn the bird around. Remember, we cut the tail off. Voila. There's where he needs to reattach. I'm going to put some heat pins in and spread it out so you can see kind of what's going on. I'm going to spread this so everything is easy to see. showed all this before just trying to just want to make it a little clearer I mean well I got to do one anyway I will try to clear things up a little if I can you know and maybe do a little, a little clarify things a little better uh, so, you know, totally totally try anyway right okay Thank you. 
top fairies. They are. All this glues around the back of the uh, back of the tail where we cut. All this glues right back. So it'll mesh right up. This is glued at the front. This is glued at the back. So let me get the tail and get ready for that. Yeah, I hope you can kind of get an idea. I'm just I just want you to be able to see pretty much. So that's. That's the whole idea behind it, so, so you can see what's going on. Remember, remember how we had the wire sticking out of the tail? Well, there's, the, there's some little holes there that can be used for that. You know, little pilot holes for, for little hints of where you can put the wire. But, what I'm going to do yeah you can see these little little things right here they're kind of actually almost too long I think but you can see them there they are and uh, what I'm going to do is drill some holes out I'm going to oversize the hole to allow for a little bit of adjustment and I'll Throw some Bondo in there, and he's going to go straight up. I just kind of want to get a rough idea where my contact points are. Probably uh, I'm going to put a little bit of an end if I wanted to. Idea where to drill. ahead of time and not have to worry about all that excess stuff going everywhere. So these wires line up. So I'm going to go right in. Oh wow. Uh, get a better fit. We'll have to at least take out these side ones so they're out of the way. Hard to get them out. I just want to make sure my depth is good enough. Uh, I left a lot of wire on the first, you know. All that depth is pretty darn good. It's right up to the bird. Wow. That's an angle though. I don't want that. Although they do do it, it looks cool, kind of, have an angle. Again, you can do some bending. I don't want to bend a lot because it's it's kind of a fragile situation. I can live with that. So the thing is, I want the tail about like this. One more an angle. So what I'm going to do, it is just 12 gauge wire. 
So what I'm getting at is I should be able to use a pair of needle nose, a little bite on the end of that. Yeah, see what I got. Let's try that. Back to the bird. I like what we've got so far. Basically, all I did was put it in those holes and I like that right there. That's what it gets. All this should reach up and it does. It just reaches up the covers. Uh, a little bit of super glue to glue all that on. Oh, wow. Okay, that'll work. Uh, get it the way where it's out of the way here a little bit. Alright. I have to just be in the, be in the pen. That's what they're. But they're full so we can make them you know. So they work. complicated to show is me basically I'm gonna sit and glue all around the perimeter and uh glue the curve back the tail back using super glue you can sew it I've done that before but it's much much easier to use uh Super glue, we don't know. I got a little bit of Bondo here, and it's kind of warm right now, so I'm not going to use a whole lot of harder. I don't have a lot of harder left anyway. And then we're going to go through the long process of holding it while it dries, which probably won't be a long process. Just like you do a deer ear or anything, you have to hold it while it dries. A deer ear or any animal ear that you use bondo method on. Use a bondo method on it, uh, it's going to be a little It's kind of like that, it gets in these holes a little bit. You push it some of that bondo in there. <coughs> First off, you can't get all that. This one is we elongated it. And should be all right. I mean, right there. Don't it's a thing called overkill. You don't want overkill. Anything that increases the uh, that edge too that we have to see where it's at. We want that right there. 
And now it's just a whole new game. Well, that was 12 gauge wire that I used, you know, for the for the wire for the tail. It's holding now. Um, now here's something else. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, if I feel like the tail, like if you look at it from the side and the tail's too far back, then just push down on the front. And when you push down on the front, it'll bring the tail up. And then you start worrying about that position. If you follow what I'm saying, it's all about proportion. Once you know, you can get the you can you can get the tail angle how you like it, and then adjust the rest of the body, kind of to make it work. If you know what I mean. It's just. Yeah, we're just proportioning everything. That's what we're doing. And I've got my super glue. I just want to go around the outward extremity of the skin. Just go around the outward extremity of the skin. And then go all the way around with my super glue. Super glue gel would be great for this. I know a lot of people use Zappy Gap for all. But Zappy Gap seems like it's a little bit stronger than regular super glue. That's just my experience with it. But I'm not necessarily sure how strong really super glue has to be for what you're doing. You know, but uh, you know, just make sure it's all good and full and split. Those are things are here anyway. Use the wheels as well. Get a little bit of leverage and use the wheels themselves, you know. To, some leverage on these things. And you just hold it. And you have to really kind of balance how much Bondo you use too. Bondo will get in the way when you're doing this stuff. You know, you're not careful. That's what you kind of want. If you've done it right, then the anus hole should be about right in the middle. There's the anus hole. And you might want to pin that shut or sew it shut. Just take a couple of sews. But yeah, there is the anus hole. I'm going to go ahead and put a pin or sew in that. I mean, while you dry it. Now we gotta glue the front part the way we do in the back part. Glue the front part the same way. To eliminate some tail weight, I can go ahead and take off these uh, this cardboard because I guess technically it would add up quite a bit of weight you know, now that I think about it. Best way that I can get. This is better off I'll be. Uh, oh, I like getting some of the weight off. Yeah. Remember, if the tail seems like it's a little far back, just cock the bird forwards a little bit. That's all you got to do. But, I'm going to have to pan in here to let you see. Hope I can get you in there. I think I can. Basically, uh, the T-pin is holding the skin back so I can put a thing of glue on it. I got one of those big old pins holding. And you do, uh, basically you want the downy feathers out of the way. So you can put a little bead of super glue all the way around. A 
all the way up top right in here. All this gets a bead of super glue. All that gets a bead of super glue. This pin can come out. Oh. These big pins are just hard to get into this hard uh, I don't want to do jerky movements trying to get it out, so I have to be slow about it. There we are. Okay, all this skin right here needs a little bit of... You know, what you want to do is try to grab as good as you can. Feather quills are a good thing to use and get it to reach over and touch. Get it to reach over and touch somebody. There we are. The good thing about super glue, once it touches, it doesn't want to untouch. So it, it got advantages there, if you know what I mean. There we are. Yeah. Then you've got so many feathers and downy feathers and everything in the way to kind of put cover up and camouflage stuff. Yeah. Can't even see it now. Now I'm going to let it dry before I start doing anything else. The good thing is it's super glue and I know it's probably already connected where it's not going to come undone. I say you uh, don't like the tail because it's a little bit too far back. Well, simple enough. Push down on the front of the body. This is all just held together by wires. So you ain't got to worry about much of anything, really. Mm -hmm. Bring his tail up a little bit. Make sure he's lined up real good. In the next few days, you'll be doing this. Kind of sure everything is good. You okay, want these feathers to stand it straight up. You just got to work and what it is as he dries <clears throat> those quills will sit down on the uh, and you can also go back here and uh, you know, do things to get, get what you want. I think it's pretty close though. I kind of locked up. Okay. Yeah, as he dries, I like to stand right in front of him and rake those feathers forwards. And eventually, we'll get where they stand straight up on their own. They're already kind of starting. I haven't known the stuff stuff under there to kind of bulge these out a little bit. Or a couple of cotton balls or something. Right up under there. These eventually, well, as the skin hardens and shrinks down to that polyfill, those quills will catch. Those quills will catch onto that. Uh, You got to figure the head's going to be cocked back and down. Let's go ahead and attach the head, I guess. Yeah, this head looks really good. Um, you can you can tell they went from a, 
uh, paints gray. Uh, well, probably painted it. With, well, I, I got a video on here. The last color could have been white. You'd be surprised what white on a turkey head blue with a little bit of white on top of it is real realistic looking and gives it kind of a kind of a really bright quality to it. Looks really good. Uh, there's two main ones that I know of where you get your freeze dried turkey heads. You can get them to paint them for you. But I've also got a video on here of, of how a, a paint schedule says to do it. So uh, just whatever you want to go by. But yeah, they, they look okay. They look good. Not bad looking at all. Sure these breast feathers are coming forwards and up rising up high enough, which I think they're good on this one. He took this insert come out. I took the screw out, and that's another good thing about this company. They had it where they insert. You didn't have to worry about grinding it out and all that stuff. It just Pop right out. So I left a little bit of wire on the end so I could maybe look up to get a good anchor with it. Maybe push it down a little bit. Get it in there real good. That's a little excess off. I can talk a little in my head to get in there real good. Alright. He's in there. All this is down below. And this. It's got a certain way it's got to go. It's got a pin in like that. Okay. Okay, I've got some of my filters pins again. What I'm doing, I'm wanting to do a kind of just where I'm going to be pinning. And 
it's just something to hold the skin in place while I get everything uh, kind of like how I like it. I guess is the right word. I tend to do this on the uh, on my animals, you know, when I'm when I, before I sew or even before I pin. I tend to. I guess the right word is put everything in a and kind of proportion everything before I start pinning is kind of what I'm doing basically. That's pretty close how everything's gonna go. Not perfect. Uh, and it's a good thing you use uh, probably a satin finish on that head as much as I've been touching it I would have been rubbing some paint off by now so I'm going to put those little push pins where you can barely see the head I'm going to go all the way around but I'm going to put a little bit of glue on that head first and glue it in place and I'm going to glue the head on I'm just going to pop that off careful with it to try to get it back just like it was, you know. That's pretty close up there. It's the same for any kind of, any turkey you do where you use artificial head, it is the, it is the same thing. Good thing about this naked material, it's soft enough, you can, uh, Little bit of glue come out. Didn't expect that. Very little. Mm -hmm. You know the good thing about this soft wicker material, it sets these pins real good. A lot of times you can bury it with your fingernail. Basically, I'm tucking the skin just up under the head where we cut the head off. When we set it off to get it freeze dry. Um, yeah. I've got a little pin pushing utensil. I don't know, uh, females got it in their mascara kits. I don't know what you call it or what it's even for. I have no idea. It goes there, it goes there. When you start getting these pins in, you can start taking some of these big giant ones out. Because they're not, they're no longer needed. That goes. Sometimes it just happens. But if you do it right, you can tuck the edge of that skin right up under the head. And nobody will know that it was ever cut off. That's pretty neat. We just going down the line. Here's a little piece. Put that skin up under these. Stick it out over there. We are. Now we just put a pin there. Knows nothing. Soft naked material accepts everything real good. You go on down the line, go all the way around. That's all you're doing. If you want to remember where your last pin was, uh, just put them in so far and then don't bury them until you're done. That way you'll know where to put your pins in. And that's a good idea. I usually do that anyway. So I think you get, a, get the idea. Go all the way around the walls. 
make sure that ski is tucked up under there. Say the skin's already cut down anyway, plus you're pinning it, yeah, it's not going to come back out. You bury that one, go ahead and bury these. Bury that one. I'm going to go ahead and bury them. I'm going to carry all these suckers. These pins are short enough, so I'm not going to stick that on the other side of the neck. So that's another plus. Sometimes using short pins are pretty good. Sometimes it's a pretty good idea. And you do that to the other side too. I got the other side do the same way. You see how it flushes up real good? Well, there's our head. Pretty good. Pretty good done. Let's see. go all the way around the waddles the uh, same way. So you can tell where your last pin was, you know. And uh, get you another one. About a quarter of an inch apart is good, I think. head down into that soft necking material, it self-adjusts, you could say. Sometimes your token tools, all you need to get that skin started under there. We've got a few days where we're going to be working on these feathers right here. But in the meantime, well, you know how I want these wings to kind of, I don't know, I want them to bow out just a little. You know, about like that, just a little bit of body. Well, the way I keep the feathers from collapsing in is I'll, I'll put, I fashion it a little, I just, I cut, I handle cut with a <clears throat> pair of snips, and I know these feathers are not going to ride, they're going to only ride up so far, so it gives me a guide on where I need to go as far as getting with this uh, support wire, this 12 inch wire, so I'm going to go back right there. This is strong foam, so it's going to be hard. Ah, it's not easy in other words. Okay, let's see. I think it's in. I think it's even good enough. I think it is. You know? That's super strong wire. Super strong foam, I should say. 
Try that again. Be right there. Right, right below where the wing feathers are. far because it'll be a rough getting it out. Basically what I want to do is I'm going to kind of conform the way I want these uh, lean feathers to, you know, I want to conform the way I want them to uh, stick out so when I get them. far back there. So okay. okay. That's actually pretty good right there. And I'm at the point where I need to start looking at reference pictures. Just make sure you do it on one side, but you want to do it on the other side. Now that's just so the wings aren't just like drooped out flat against the body. I just bowed him out a little bit where he's not so close to the... Uh... Okay. You can see it. I just want to control how close the wings are to the body. They can be almost too close and just kind of droop straight down and be real flat looking. And I don't want the flat look. I'd rather have him a little bit puff. A little bit like a puff ball a little bit. See, like an example. See, like on this side, see how the wings are just kind of like real close in? All this has to come out of it. So, what I use, 12 gauge wire under there to, to kind of pull the wings out from away from the body a little bit where it's not so close. You can see the difference. You can see how one side looks a little bit far out and the other side is just like really, really, really in. Yeah, you can tell it. But yeah, so I'm gonna do the other side the same way and make it proportioned, kind of where they're evenly bubbled out on both sides. Might have to look at it from the front to get a good idea. Okay, here I'm gonna Put this one in, now you're getting like a rear view shot. Um, what I'll do, you know, you know, to kind of prop this better a little bit where it's puffed out a little bit. I've got my 12 gauge wire, cut me off another piece of 12 gauge wire. And I know the feathers will ride up just below this last feather. So I find a strategic spot to kind of go in. And that's pretty good right there. And oh, it's a little bit hard. Whew. Probably want to go in deep. This is tough foam. It's not white stuff. I'm not going to get away with doing this for 14 days or something, you know. Something more easy, I'm not so stout. I don't This is what I've always used is 12 gauge. Let's see. idea is to try to match it up with the other side. So here we go. And the feather is going to ride up like this. So it's about good just like that. Now 
and it was anatomically close on both sides anyway. So, what I'm going to do, let's see how you look from the front. Probably skip it off of that right here. I'm just going to push it into the side a little bit. I think it's pretty good, but I may want just a hair bit more. So I'll go in and get my wire accordion. Stuck it into this foam form for a little bit. And I don't know about you, but that looks pretty close already. Okay, that's how he looks from the rear. Now these are gonna be cardboarded up. They'll be taped up and cardboarded up. All the way almost to the body. And then we're gonna do the sides, the secondary feathers. We got this got to pretty big time, if it can be. Okay. You gotta make sure the feathers are layered right, you know they a certain way they go. All these separations, yeah, definitely need some work. But see a lot of this does get come together. All the way on to the end. See how they're coming together. Be surprised what you can do with two fingers. That looks right there in the head. This right here. Be surprised what you can do with your finger. There's a, sometimes there's a little bit of residue on there. Borax and what have you. And your fingers actually get some of that off. See how, see how good that feather looks now? And it just, just takes a little while to do this stuff. But you get the idea of what's going on. I'll show you a little bit better. These secondary feathers. We're going to ride all the way up to the base of the, where that wire goes, where the end of that wire goes. Like that. And then, I'm going to spread these out real good. Primaries. What we want, we want these shoulders up. I hope it will work. Right here in the front, this should be under the uh, breast feathers, this front part. And we may help bring out some of those good feathers by sticking some cotton or something under there. And uh, kind of shim it up, I guess, the right word. So that's what we got from the side. Now let's look at it from the front. It might be advantageous for y'all even look and see how see what we got here. It tells a little bit at an angle, but I think that is some of that's a thing. Let's see. Does he look bubbled up on both sides? That's some shock damage right there. Some serious 
shot, man. And do the best you can with what you got. Yeah, those wing wires that, uh, you know, from where we mounted it, I try to cut those suckers off. You don't need them anymore. You know, it's where we attach the wings to the body. Uh, yeah. Get those suckers out of the way. You don't need them. Kind of get in the way, to be honest with you. But you get the idea. What I like to do. I've reused these on several birds already, but what it is is cardboard. I cut two piece strips of cardboard. I'll staple the ends of it with just a regular staple. Once I kind of get him bowed out, I kind of like him. Um, I might preset where I want the feathers um, with masking tape. I'll just get like a, oh, that's in the front. That's supposed to be uh, like that. There we are. Okay. Kind of make sure they're evenly gapped. No separations, you know, but definitely evenly gapped. That's pretty good. As much as you need. You want a good gap, but no separations. But you want to exploit the feathers. You want them. You don't want them all tucked in. If that makes any sense. So got a good little. You could probably take the other side too if you wanted to, but see how they're good and so what I'll do. Basically right there where that wire is. came through with uh, my T pin again. Try this. All right. Okay, maybe not pull in so much. What's going on is these are going to ride up here like they're supposed to. I'll start pinning as I go. Preferably the small ones. The big ones have more, got more width and everything. It just makes it harder. And all I'm doing is gapping the feathers. So, okay, like one of them. One of them goes here. using these for gapping. So all you need is these small pins and Flatten everything out. Uh, 
real. Hold on a second. Don't need this tape anymore. Let's see. These can. I need to thicken. Thin that out a little bit. In other words, all this right here. Come down a little bit anyway. Want to kind of want the separation, but I want the yeah, I can live with that. couple of things hold everything in place as it dries pins here and there but I can also use this long piece of cardboard to bring the primaries and secondaries together where they're not separated see Look at the reference picture. Yeah, see, oh, I'll show you better here in a second. Yeah, you want no separation. So, basically, what we got, you know, let me lift that up because I don't want no separation between the secondaries and primaries. I am making sure that there is no separation so so it's affecting the way i'm doing things a little bit let's see that's about right for that Okay, that's what we got right there. Just because I got that last primary down there, you can bend the wires back there for a better anchor. You can, well, let me look for pliers here. Yeah, I'm not gonna run when you need it. Yeah, like if you want a real good hold, you can. Hold your T-pin and bend it. And uh, kind of helps anchor everything in, see. It helps sometimes. Uh, 
Worst case scenario, staple it if you've got to. Whatever you got to do. Here again, rusty pins sometimes work better because they got so much stuff on them that they, uh, it holds. They hold real good. So I do that too sometimes. Make sure I got a rusty pin to use. You can see how it's brought everything a lot closer together right there. These are separated the way I kind of like them. You see how everything's spread out perfect? It's kind of like how you want it. If you need a little bit more flatness, then put one of these on the front. Let's plant it right here. I got another piece just like this stapled on the end. Then go in. From the front. So you've already got your separation. You kind of got how you like it. Now I just. To flatten everything. Make it look cool. Copy some pins through there. Flattened everything out, makes it look a little bit good. Kind of brought everything together, see? You can control how much is dish pulled out. If it's too much, you can always go in with your curvature. A lot of people use tape and will take the inside of that wire and the inside of the feathers and that's what they use. That's how I was taught actually. But you, know, you can bring stuff in if it's a little bit too dish bowlish. <clears throat> that looks pretty good. That doesn't look bad. And you can kind of see how everything secondary feathers kind of bunch up a little bit together. That's how they do. And then you've got your primaries. Okay, you got part of I got some polyfuel. And what it is is right here. Well, let me go up from underneath. Try to show you. Right here, all this is just kind of like buckled in a little bit. And I kind of wanted to stick out. It's this part right here. All the feathers were just kind of going in. And when it does that, a lot of times I'll put stuff in here to 
swell it out a little bit where it don't buckle in so much. Okay, that's better. It's a lot better. Do it sometimes. Even here on the outside, sometimes these kind of lay a little bit flat sometimes. Not so much now, now that I tucked it, but I have been known to like put some of that up under there just to get things to kind of puff out a little bit. But it's doing pretty good without it, so this time I'm not going to need it. And whatever you do on one side, you want to do it on the other. This side's not bad at all. Over the next few days, we'll be doing this. Eventually, these feathers will stay up without dropping down. You don't want no major gaps between the tail or anything, but you definitely want to make sure. And you've seen on previous videos, I've uh, Sometimes I'll cheat and use like little cotton balls and stuff and put in there. Or polyfill, pieces of polyfill to kind of help keep things up. But eventually it's going to stay up anyway. You can break these forwards and bring them up. You can also preen these feathers here. Make it where you can see I got like a little line right there. That's what they do. They make they make lines is what they make. If you can replicate that and you got enough feathers that haven't been shot off or like maybe lost, you know, from fighting other birds or whatever, um, then that's great. Eventually that's gonna get stiff and stand straight up here in the next few days. You can work these breast feathers out and get them where they'll stay like how you want them. And what it does is adding body. It's fluffing him up. Those quills are catching the polyfill that I glued on the form. And, uh, yeah. It's got a bad spot on this side. The other side's good, but this side's got some bad spots. And you just keep, keep doing that. Uh, yeah. Fluff him up as good as you think as he'll fluff. By uh, raking your fingers over like that, getting you built up real good. Once everything gets where it's kind of like where you want it, then uh, you let him dry. And then take everything off, paint the legs, and he's ready to go. Put some habitat on the base, and you're ready to go. Well, unfortunately, I'm not going to be in town for a while, for about a week. I'm a truck driver. So what I've got to do is kind of like put these, or they separate a little bit. So when I come back, it's all the feathers aren't going to be just laying down. In other words, I'm not going to be around to be able to rake the feathers forwards. But this will help. I think I should still be able to, when I come in, to work them in a little bit. I 
should be able to. Tuck it all the way down, that's how you get the separation in. Get all the way down to the base of the feather where it goes to the body. So I'm just putting this stuff around and it's just kind of helping it out because I'm not going to be around to work the feather. So I don't have a helper or anything. It's able to come here, so. They need to be anyway. Sticking out pretty good already. Try to come up any places where the feathers are like really bad. But this has just got a bad spot on it. It just has a bad place on it. If you got any place where the feathers are like going extremely far out, and then tape them down a little bit. Smoothing things out a little bit there. Okay, I want this to go straight up. That's pretty close right there. That's pretty much it right there. See what he looks like. Okay. So all this still needs to go forwards. See all this needs to be up like this. That way when you go back. But you get the idea, the head goes up and back down. It goes like this. About like that. Okay. And to get the idea. these you want 
these up. Uh, so I'll, I'm going to be in. Probably going to go ahead and take a couple more weeks off. Or going to be driving on the road for a few more weeks. So I'm going to go ahead. Since it's been so cold out here, I'm just going to leave it out here. But all this needs to. I like the idea of all this being fluffed up is what I'm getting at. All this up in front here. See, I don't have that gap, you know, in between the back of the head and the feathers. You want that head to slam in there and all these be, all these ones right here. If, if they stay like that, and then I went back and the head was, had these feathers around the, almost to the side of it even, then you know it's done good enough, if that makes any sense. In other words, he's still not dry yet. But he's getting there. So I'm just going to do it like I was doing before and mat feathers down in there. Keep things separated. Just a little trick. In other words, if you're not around to rake the feathers because you got job obligations, this is a good way to cheat at it. And use cotton balls as your friend. Jab them down in there. Let them help you get the separation you need on these feathers. But he's still not dry yet. So I'm just going to keep working at it. Well, I'll see you here in a couple of weeks. Should be ready by then. Sorry about that. Then we can do the preening. You know, like on these feathers here on the end. Uh, it helps to use, you know. I may do that later, you know, when I get him done. But, yeah, you can... You can see that that's shot damage too. You see a lot of damage. Or I'm sure they get a little bit of damage from fighting other birds and stuff too. You know, I'm sure. Oh, that's on tape. Some of this stuff you can... There's a little shot damage right there, you can tell. So, you can see little bits of damage here and there. But... You can straighten things up a lot with your two fingers. In a couple of weeks, you can start taking all the tape off and everything. Just be real fast about it. If you're slow, it's worse. Do it this way so you can see. I can hold from underneath. But I should be able to go back without those feathers. So those feathers are kind of sticking. They're not moving. That's what I was kind of wanting. Yeah. Pretty close. Let's see. Yeah. There we are. They're still down, but they're supposed to be up like this. Let me see. Okay. Still supposed to be up. They're pretty good. It's pretty straight. Just want to make sure the head's kind of straight. Oh, that looks. Okay, these are up still. Let's see, we got feathers through here. 
feathers all throughout it really. On the sides. Yeah, it's a bummer being out of town, you know, being a truck driver. Can't really get the things the way you want to, per se. Well, that's kind of what I got. Okay, uh, we can get all the cardboard off. You still tilt it a little bit forward. I'm going to tilt him just a hair bit back uh, if I can. Taking all my cardboard off. And we're going to use this for another bird. See, all this wire comes off. Now, this one right here. This cardboard right here, if you wanted, you could tape it to the wire on the other side. Um, that's what I usually do. Yeah. Oh, you gotta make him in the body right there. Should be able to get it down past here. Uh, gotta get it somehow. There we are. Oh, I got it. So there's no gap down in between there. Um, these could have been a little bit closed together. Sometimes they're cut more. Um, yeah, a lot of times these will cut a little bit more, and these are what spreads out real good, and it makes for a good strutting turkey. Looking pretty good.
you know, where he's been stayed. You can uh, pull all these polyfill out. All these pieces of polyfill. And believe me, I had a lot. He was super limp. And uh, I'm going to have to work on him for a few days, you know. So because of that, we're not polyfill, but it's deep. But it's still coming out. And you can reuse the polyfill even. I've got it in here, wow. Got some of it pretty deep, too. Pretty darn deep down in there. He's already sticking up good. You can help it out a little now if you wanted to. Better to be around it and work it, of course. But it's sticking real good. Remember the back where we had the wires that bowed around? Just to give a little bit of body. Well, see, we can take those out now. There we are. See, I just bowed a little bit. And uh, this was poked into the form. And a lot of times, they'll run tape on this side. And tape against the feathers and the wire. And it kind of bows it out. I could have bowed it out even a little bit more. Um, but that worked. And uh, I have even taped cardboard to it. Then you got something to pin the feathers to. You can put the feathers like how you want them. That's a little more tedious. I would just go inside right below the this last tail feather. You know, where the feather's right up, right below it. And I go into the form a little bit. And then kind of, you know, just kind of bow it out a little bit. Uh, then run the wings up against it. This might be a little bit over-exaggerated, but you get my point and uh, run tape this way and it'll take the wire and the wings where they'll stay and kind of do it that way. Clean all these feather ends up. Just use two fingers. It's a tedious process. Do the tops of the tail feathers. You know, you can uh, you know, all these separations, you know, when humanly possible, if you can, you get all these gaps out.
Thanks for a good looking mount. You can do that. It does help. Thanks for just getting the gaps out. You know, when humanly possible, of course. Got a video on painting the legs. I'll give him a few more weeks. When I come back in, I should be able to pull all that stuff off. All the tape, all the polyfill out of the feathers. My problem is I didn't have feathers coming up behind the head. And I didn't like that gap. So, I let him sit. I should have been able to work him, work his head, I guess, a little bit more. Get the feathers raised up real good. But, he'll come out okay. Couple of weeks. Polyfill goes out. Preen all these feathers with my fingers. Strip that tape off the front. Paint the legs. Jab some plants down in there. Uh, maybe glue them in. You probably jab them in. Foam goes deep enough. I think about an inch and a half, two inch deep foam, and then the rest is wood. So you get ferns and. Stuff like that to drop down in there. I'm just start taking all this stuff out. Yeah, this is pretty well stiff. Now I'll show you what we got to do next. Okay, before you paint the legs, you want to make the, sure you go around where the feathers meet the meet the leg. I just put a little bit of a little bit of tape there to kind of help out. Now it's real easy to overpaint the legs. Sometimes I've, I've been known to do that. Or really, the paint schedule calls for lavender flesh, which I don't have. But I do have natural flesh. Which I know it's not the same thing, but it's almost good enough, really. So, close. So that's just for overspray for the feathers. I usually I tape all this down here, but I'm gonna kind of get away with just doing like I would if I was painting a fish. I'm just kind of keeping on my spray. Basically, the tape's gonna just lift up all the dirt if I try to use the tape, so I'm kind of refraining from using that. But I guess I can do stuff like this and. That'll work. That, that's pretty good right there. So basically determining what the paint schedule says. Some cases just lavender flesh. A lot touch up with lavender flesh. Let it go. Put a little bit of satin sheen gloss over the top of it. Some, I like to darken in between the toes a little bit sometimes. Although you can't get more natural than that really, but... Um, you can also go like chocolate brown. And then a little bit of uh, cadmium red or gill red. Gill red's what I got. Gill red really adds a lot. Like I have just painted it straight gill red. But lavender flesh is kind of what a lot of people use. And but I don't have them. But I have flesh, so I'm gonna use flesh. Okay, go on flesh. You can go real light with it. I've also got a little bit of red violet, which may sometimes with the purpling legs it could help with the thing. I don't want to get too carried away. Uh, kind of like stick with what the program is. Feel easy to overpaint bird legs. 
you know, somehow. Depending on the bird, I guess. Okay. Let's get on both. Okay, I've got a little red violet. You can see like a, like a real good color. Uh, I'm going to do it lightly to see what it looks like. So far, so good. It's a really good match. It's a little brighter than what it's supposed to be. But there's so much darkness underneath these bird legs. It works to dry it out and everything. I don't think it's going to matter a whole lot. That's why I'm toning in that flesh I put on there. Just a little bit, because you can really get carried away and put too much on these birds. Basically, I'm just tinning. Now, that's the right one, just tinning. And yeah, I have this huge gill red all by itself. To going from light to dark usually when I paint and then it's sometimes my downfall and sometimes your realism is achieved by going from chocolate brown first and I didn't do that and what, like I usually tend to do I just go to chocolate brown and try to give it a lifelike appearance Got my chocolate brown. You just don't want it to look too pretty and violet looking, really. And I've got a little bit of 
can kind of tone in this red and make it look, maybe put a little bit more right here in the, in the webby. Put a little bit more right there. The toes have a lot of that rich brown on them. I mean the uh, <clears throat> toenails. wrong to put a little bit of that brown back in those toenails. That's what color they are. You see a lot of brown on the toes anyway. As long as it don't hurt. Add a little bit of brownness back to it. Even the spurs got a little bit of that rich brown on them, you know, on the ends. It really brings them to life. Now the back of the feet and the back of the elbow tend to have a lot. So I tend to give that a little bit of extra attention back here. You know, the elbow where the feathers stop. Bottom of the feet. Got my satin sheen gloss. Just give it a satiny finish. You don't take much. And now what I'll do is, uh, yeah, this is just foam anyway. So I'll find a good place where I think I want to put a fern. Right here, I just got a wire. Depending on the width of what you're using, you know. So we will All it is is hard foam. I guess probably the same stuff they make deer heads out of. It's not that super soft stuff, that's for sure. You just stick your plants in, kind of like how you want them. Now I'm going to take the time to preen his feathers out and try to get rid of gaps and everything, uh, just for a cleaner looking mount. Now you call the customer, uh, I'm done with it. <laughs> 